Welcome back. A few years ago, we had the wooden mechanism expanding table, and then a few years after that, I took a pass at making a metal mechanism table. But the challenge I ran into here was just requiring so many custom components and, and time and labor intensive fabrication. Uh, it was built around this large diameter heavy wall pipe, which is kind of hard to find. The mechanism works, but it wasn't really working as a product. I I wasn't ready to, to move forward with it, so I let it sit. I still thought about it and considered some other options, like using trailer spindles and hubs from those, welding onto this. These are steel, it's easier to weld than aluminum. But it still wasn't giving me the vertical space I needed, and it wasn't quite there. So I let it continue to sit so I could mull it over. And it's a few more years. I've got something that I'd like to show you. Here is our new expanding table mechanism. It has the characteristic rotate, expand, and the lift motion. With a few extra additions. The basic design philosophy hasn't really changed from the previous metal mechanism, but the execution has. So we have a trailer spindle in the center with taper bearings on it, and then there's a cast hub that rides on that. This castle nut keeps everything in compression. There's a hub that is fixed vertically, but it can rotate, which is attached to that, and then every other arm. Uh, so this is one of them is attached to four sides of that hub, and then in between we have a lifting hub, so they're all tied together, but they can lift up and down and it rides on the ramp like you just saw. And then up above we have the drive plate, which is fixed, and that provides the motion with the arms to push the carts out and then pull them back in when it goes over center. Some things that have changed from the previous attempt is a comprehensive plan right from the beginning. I designed this entire thing in CAD and I just planned it all out very carefully. It was especially helpful for things like these arms and getting the clearances. You might be curious about the goofy shape on every other arm. These ones here look normal, nice curves, makes sense. What's going on with this? Well, when you go in, you need this curve to reach around the mounting point of the other one. And when you expand out, as it's lifting, you notice that it's going to lift a little too soon if that arm was mounted uh, straight across. And so this hook here gives you the clearance to that arm. You can see also that these arms are actually at two different levels, right? These lifting arms sit above the other ones. Another big change from the previous design is laser cut parts. More services have become available and having that CAD model I was able to, to just order these. So this top plate, for example, is laser cut, and it was a huge time savings. Any hole pattern you want, it just appears in a box, and the prices are very reasonable. This drive plate here is laser cut. I actually welded it together from three parts. Uh, it was more cost effective that way, especially as the, they get bigger, and who knows, I might need to make a larger one. These arms also would be very time consuming, I know from experience. There's other parts that have been laser cut, for example, these gusset plates down here. Building on those laser cut flat parts are extrusion and using those to make the hub. So even with a regular chop saw, you can get really nice square cuts and with a good hole pattern, you put the extrusion between and you're able to build this round hub that is quite rigid and quite accurate. And then that serves as your base for the arms. And then obviously having this plate, you can make it any size you want. You could rotate them, you could do all, all sorts of things. And that gave me the flexibility that I needed with the hub. You may also notice a few 3D printed parts. Some of them like these are gonna be aluminum in the final uh, model, but it may be subject to change in the meantime and some of these extrusions were a little expensive. So I just went ahead and printed some decent first passes right now. These are the mount blocks that go to the panels. Probably most importantly are the ramps. In order for this to rotate 
about that center axis and go up. This needs to be a compound curve. That's pretty difficult to make by hand or at least to make accurately and then to repeat it. And I think it really does help the performance. The lifting profile you'll see is not linear either. So it lifts more slowly at the beginning and then faster at the end. And I did that on purpose because you tend to have stiction in the mechanism and I wanted to be able to break that slowly without the user necessarily feeling it as they turn it. Finally, what goes underneath the mechanism? This wood temporary stand is fine for now, but it's not gonna work for the real table. Well, I actually spent some time planning the legs. <laughs> So here's one of the concepts so far. Obviously, this is only one plane. There would be another set. Uh, there's already been some testing and some iterations on this, but the legs are definitely part of the plan. Now you're caught up. What are we gonna work on today? First, we're gonna pull these arms off and drill holes on these marks so that I have underside access to these mounting screws. Right now I have to take them off, which doesn't really make that much sense. And then with the arms off, we're gonna make some improvements to the hub, swap out these wood parts for metal. The main extrusions have actually settled down and that's because they're clamping two things at once. So these are the main arms and normally these slide over and then this screw captures this arm to the top plate as well as bringing the extrusion up. And this is something that I'm a little bit unsure if it will work because you can have compounding issues when you do this. But it's great because it saves me a second set of holes over here and having to uh, grind out this so that it clears the head and doesn't fit weirdly. So we'll see if it works. Hmm. The lifting hub would lift up freely from here, except for this lever there's something about saving a perfectly good zip tie that is very satisfying. Bullseye. The big lift. There we go. Okay, so the whole thing... <laughs> Had to come out, and finally, the lifting hub comes cleanly away. Here we have a nice illustration of the three main parts or assemblies in the center. So we have the spindle on the end, we have the fixed hub, it rotates but it doesn't go up and down, and then we have the lifting hub on the left. These 3D printed blue parts were part of a previous iteration to provide the guides that guided the vertical motion so they'll get replaced later but right now i'm using their vertical height to to get this distance correct and i don't have i don't want to recut longer extrusions the lifting hub is looking good now and it's time to add these star levers down in there but to give you a better visual of how that works, this is gonna be on the lifting hub so it can go up and down. There's a screw down in the bottom here which can be adjusted. By moving this up and down one unit, this shaft goes up and down two. I have a mark on there. So here we can see near the bottom. If you want to adjust the uh, starting point or anything, that's where this screw comes in. Makes it easy to get fine adjustments from the top when the mechanism is all together. The star lever has a design flaw. That mounting screw behind it is always behind it. It can, can never be accessed by a screwdriver. 
These two screws will be fine to keep it in place. I just had more for stability, but we'll go with those and rely on friction for now. What we need to do now is get the printed inserts uh, that are these, except for this side. Access to the gusset plate screws is another easy improvement. Here, here, and here are pretty easy, but not that one. There's no way to come in directly, so you have to use a, an L-shaped Allen and get in there and only do a partial turn. It's a little bit awkward. It turns out that 16 gusset plates is a lot, but we have all the holes drilled. So now, if I want to tighten this screw, for example, I could come in with my, or I could come in with my long wrench, reach through, and snug it down. The holes in the front here are for a piece, which allows me to mount the underside panels to it. It's time to put it back together. Now we're hanging from the top plate and the lifting should work. Although it's, well, <laughs> we need the uh, lug nuts. Hmm. The lifting hub is bound up. I think this is because we changed these plates that hold it together, so the spacing is a little different. The way the guides work for the lifting hub is that you have these four rods, and then in the extrusion here, we have an empty space, and I have set screws that come in from the side. So you can see one just a little bit right there. There's another down low and another from the other side, and those all point in and create a system like this, which, which allows the shaft to go up and down, but it constrains it side to side. This avoids over-constraining the system by trying to capture it all the way around uh, with a circle, which when you have four of them, if there's any twist or any misalignment, you then have jamming problems. And it also makes a system that's easy to adjust. So this actually threads through the extrusion and comes flush on the inside of the channel. And then you can put this in the channel with another to lock that set screw in place. I am aware that there's major potential for galling. I'm not using an aluminum shaft like this in there, but we'll, we'll see how it does. Um, right now it's solving several nice problems and it's very affordable. Fortunately, those excess holes we made earlier work quite nicely for adjusting the set screws as well. So it's nice and free. What is stopping me? I think our adjustment screws for the star lifting are too far down. It's causing that star lever to raise up so much that it actually uh, bottoms out or tops out against that printed guide and then it won't go. There was some rotation interference because the aluminum piece is larger than the wood. Anyway, chiseled that off, got it taken care of. So now we're free going up and down. And then if I isolate that, the rotation is also free. And then if you do them together, it 
we have what we want. It is time now, I believe, to put the arms back on. Making sure the arms are parallel is important, but aside from some basic sanity checks, which I'm doing here, I'm going to hold off on fine tuning it until we make the perimeter ring, which goes around the main arms. So it'll attach to this arm, attach to that one, basically all the points where it's blue. And then it will hover just outside of these lifting arms. And we'll get into that, I think, in the next video. The table is back together and a variety of adjustments have been completed that were required because of some of the other changes we made, but now it works. Personally, I find the doubling lift on the star quite mesmerizing, probably because I spent so much time building the mechanism. But to make it even more clear, I have a Sharpie here marking the start position of this shaft and a Sharpie there. And when we move it, the 2x becomes really apparent. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.